another thing about acting and this note even if you stood there and did nothing but the camera's tracking in you and the background scores you know like wow kya subtle acting here <laughs> you know is very difficult to be to reach here in this space i come from a small town you know and uh, from a family where uh, dreaming something like this is like a very big thing that they just want are idhar idhar aao idhar are kya kar rahe ho line line kyu nahi bol rahe ho aap acha ha idhar dekho ha acha kaam karo thoda smile ha so you know well, he will say that that happens so actors are vulnerable you cannot treat them you know ki are ek line kyu nahi bol ke aaye you have to be really smart with how you deal with people because if you are an idealist and you wear your heart on your sleeve and you're reactionary which is what i was you can easily be taken advantage of and people will use that will will manipulate you. and there's a lot of that that happens thank you guys for really just being here uh, for braving some really nasty traffic uh, but let me tell you that right now if there's one show that's worth your time it would be trial by fire so i'm not going to waste any more of your time join me as i introduce the uh, the show's cast and filmmaker abhedyol rajshree deshpande and prashant nai welcome to the front row thank you and thank you. right at the start let me thank you for really creating trial by fire which is just so engaging so heartbreaking uh, and so well crafted and such an important story about the uphar fire tragedy uh, seven episodes streaming live on netflix now i've binged all seven uh, <laughs> oh and my I god i highly recommend it <laughs> i no. i would say take a little break between them <laughs> it's, i it's wouldn't heavy. actually it you is wouldn't? heavy but you will stick around okay. you will stick around Fair enough. so so own. on that note mm. i want to start with you and find a, kind of just help set context uh there's a line that rajshree's character neelam says in one of the episodes where she says if i knew that this was the justice my children would get early on i would have taken a gun and shot those responsible for their death and then i watched the real life neelam krishnamurthy say this in a documentary when i was researching so help me understand what really was the process of fleshing out the characters of neelam and shekhar uh of neelam and shekhar well and so um you know obviously there was extensive research and so on that that uh, went into it before the the actors came on mm -hmm. uh but you, you know truth be told uh you know so we we decided you know from our side that it that the uh, it was better if the actors didn't meet the real life uh, people so that wasn't part of our preparation and the reason we we did that is because you know oftentimes when you you're doing something real um there's a lot of emphasis on the physical appearance and you can really lose your your way with prosthetics and mm -hmm. you know all sorts of things uh we wanted to keep that as simple as possible and keep the focus on the emotional um on the emotional truth of the characters because we're asking them to recreate things that no one should ever have to go through so it's very important to create an environment for them where they could be as much in the moment so you know we did all the script readings we discussed uh scenes at length there was a lot of preparation and discussion going into what you know of several weeks and months mm -hmm. but after all that i think what was really key was just creating an environment uh the whole crew and us where they could take risks where they could you know be vulnerable where they could really experiment and uh, and try to recreate these moments which no human being should ever have to go through so um, yeah sort of a mix of yeah. those things i want to talk more about what that environment really is because i've heard both of you very extensively talk about how specifically with a role like this it was so important to be honest and sensitive in your portrayal but in actuality what does that mean like what would being dishonest in in a situation like this entail um what is i honesty to a role what is this environment how did that help what is being honest i mean that's part of the acting process so you come prepared to a certain extent like you know your lines mm -hmm. you know what the scene is about can have a graph of your character but when the director says action you kind of forget all of the prep that you've done <laughs> if you want to flow and let it come out of you um uh, like it it isn't acting you know and the only way you can avoid acting is to just be honest 
And by being honest is, while I'm speaking to you right now, I'm being honest. I'm not trying to, I haven't come with a prepared answer to you. Because you don't know my questions. I don't know your questions. <laughs> um, so when you're doing a scene uh, and you are upset mm -hmm. and I'm trying to calm you down, you approach that with a certain honesty. So for example, the brief given to us uh, that Neelam is really fiery. She's, her anger is like on her nose, like she will make you all hear what she has to say, what she has to say. You'll, each one of you listen, she'll point to each one of you. She's that dynamic. He is a lot more like he'll hold her back. Or if she wants to do this, then he'll hold her arm and allow her to do it. He'll be quiet. He'll stay in the back. There's a certain dynamic in that relationship. So now there's an honesty. How do you honestly portray that? So when she's performing, when she's expressing herself, how do I best support that? How do I become sort of the the base on which she stands, if that is what the relationship is. How does he make himself invisible? Because he won't express his emotions. She always expresses hers. She doesn't even give him a chance to express, <laughs> you know. And it's somewhat based on the real life couple. And we met them and it was really sweet because they are really like that. And Shekhar said it himself. He's like, whatever she wants, I'm there. You know, she has to say something, I'm quiet. So I, it's hard to answer what is honesty. Honesty is telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Honesty is responding to what the other person is giving you. Honesty is letting your co-actor express herself and not coming so prepared that if she does something new, You're thrown off. you don't even notice it. You just continue on with what you've learned. Honesty is being in the moment. Honesty is taking the, in the instruction that your director has given you. Honesty in this case is um, considering the person you're portraying and trying to be as representative of that person as you can because we weren't told to mime, mimic or sound or act or behave physically like them right. but we were told to represent them. Yeah, yeah. What's honesty for you? I think it's a very um, a tricky area uh, because uh, every person's uh, honesty can be different. Uh, how you approach that thing is very important. Like for me, uh, understanding Neela, because see, I'm understanding someone's 25 years of life. What we are showing is 19 years of life. Understanding 19 years of life was a very difficult task. Uh, of course, the script was, you know, there and whatever the online material we had, it was there. So to find that emotional truth, yeah mentally, psychologically, physically, you know, was a challenge. And I think when you, when you work on, keep on thinking about all these things also, and finding that emotional truth in all of that. Because see, what happens as an actor, um, you do with, you go with the preparation of, you know, maybe preparing um, how it is, how, to, how do we approach. Uh, you work with the director, understand each and every line, understand the person whom you are portraying, and uh, finding that sur. Yeah. So, um, and, and you, you keep on working on it, like every day. So, uh, that truth which is there, uh, the emotional truth which we carry, as uh, Abhay rightly said, which we are carrying over there. So, being there in that moment, with your preparation, but, but when you're there, you, you have to be part of that whole environment. Uh, you have to believe in a space that, you know, okay, this is you. This is what is going on. And uh, the emotions, whatever you're going through, is there with you. So it has to be an inner process. So for me, the honesty is how your inner process is, how you're reacting, how you're, uh, you know, um, believing that, okay, this is what actually happening. So, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there are so many incredible moments in this show and my favorite, and this is not a spoiler, has got to be uh, the birthday scene and the scene in which you guys first get told um, that your children are no more. And funnily enough, neither of those scenes had dialogues and in neither of those scenes did you all even have each other to sort of play off. You were on a dead phone line and I really want to know what you were looking at that made everything look so convincing. But how did you guys just do so much with no dialogues and not even each other to react and respond to? 
putting on a spot of a job, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can answer that. Yeah. yeah he directs yeah. us at the end of the day. I was yeah. just doing my job. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, aside from that, which is true. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I think we were constantly looking to do as much as possible without dialogue. Um, that was definitely one of the goals, and that was a process between all of us. Is we would even if we'd rehearse the scene we, on the day, we'd always come in and go, "Do we really need this?" Oh. Uh, because often you don't, you really don't. And in moments like this, I mean, what would he say? You know, what would anyone okay. say? You know, it was uh, exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> acting. Yeah. I know that's where yeah. she's coming from. Yeah. And often, <laughs> if you if you create the moments correctly, you really don't need the dialogue. Like the birthday cake says everything, you know, and the, the the silence between them is much more powerful than anything anything they could possibly say to each other. So. I think you're, at least personally, I'm always looking to kind of take away as much dialogue as possible. Um, you know, because I, I just feel things are much stronger and these two mm -hmm. scenes are, are examples of that. Um, but, you know, I'll also, you know, I'll speak about both of those in terms of very often because these are two very fine actors who are, who are really at the top of their, their game. Uh, it's about just keeping the noise out, you know. So one thing, for example, we wouldn't do is we wouldn't cut um, because then someone comes and sprays the, you know them in the face and you know no offense to anyone who's in hair and makeup <laughs> and the light guy adjusts and you know these scenes are really strong and you want to keep your actors in the mood and you don't want anything to def to interrupt them so we just wouldn't cut we just kind of say okay let's just keep going and and then just watch what they do you know just very almost no direction at all but just sort of let it go and and um, you know, they they went really really far, and then, you know, and, and yeah, it was you know, just kind of get out of their way and watch what they do. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, I feel that uh, it's not necessary that you always have to explain everything through words. And uh, you have to, uh, you know, you have to understand that even a look also is enough for something. It says a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, and you have to like uh, that's the reason I feel you know a lot of times I see a um, lot of uh, a lot of things on um, th there is so much they are talking and it's not going through here you know the feelings are not there so yeah. you know you have to th that's the reason I feel you know uh, Prashant understand that you know where it is actually needed and where you can just avoid and you can just play without that thing so you don't have to express or explain everything. Yeah. I mean, you talked about the look, and the look is so powerful, especially when it comes from a Rajshree Deshpande. Mm -hmm. So I just want to quote my colleague Suchin Mehrotra's review. He's there somewhere. And I resonated so much with your review, Suchin, about your performance, Rajshree. She delivers a masterclass in internalized rage and pain as a mother who lets her quest consume her, as though she stopped living life the day her children lost theirs. That, that, it said so much uh, to me. I mean, I couldn't have articulated it better, Suchin, but there's a certain like coldness and hardness to your expression that just progressively kept building yeah. as the show went on. How, where, how, where do you tap to get there? See, I'm a very, I, I think I'm, I'm Can not we just great. give her a round of applause? <laughs> Thank you. I saw that your coffee mug at the airport today said Neelam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> she I, forgot my uh, question, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, uh, it is very difficult to be, to reach here in this space. I come from a small town, you know, and. Uh, from a family where um, dreaming something like this is like a very big thing. You know, you have to fi follow a protocol of life that you have to do this, you have to do that. And when you come from a humble background, then it is very, very difficult. So this is like, you know, I've never even dreamt of. I, I don't think so. I've ever dreamt of anything to do. I just wanted to just get out and do, s just, I don't know, just live. And then, you know, um, I feel, you know, I fo I'm fortunate enough that I met right kind of a people uh, and they gave me, me opportunities to perform like Angry Indian Goddesses or Durga or Subhatra uh, or uh, Sacred Games or F 
playing game and and um, uh, prashant uh, gave me an opportunity uh, my uh, casting director sanjeev morya trusted me uh, and gave me an opportunity to portray neela my and it's a responsibility and it's a huge thing that how can i you know it it is it is difficult to be here you have to work hard you have to and because what i had was only craft i just believed that okay this is the only craft is the one which will take me or which will like you know people will realize that okay she is she can be this and i and i believe that uh, you know i don't want to do similar characters again and again and again if they are not written properly so i made sure that i didn't work i uh, and unfortunately social work came into my life 10 years back when even i was working for um, angry indian goddesses so that made me realize that how important it is to be uh, part of the society from where i actually came Hmm. from my father uh, is a farmer and uh, you know when you start living a protocol life you forget that uh, that you know look back and actually what's happening in the society and as being an artist i feel it's a huge responsibility that uh, you yeah, what's happening in the world and uh, where, where you are part of it so because we forget you know we would just want to like okay i want to make money i want to like now uh, have a best life i want to travel and um, uh, that's it life ends like that's it so i wanted to ba- break that i wanted to deconstruct that that okay no i think what i'm portraying on screen if i'm portraying a person's like lakshmi's life on screen on like angry indian goddesses what what is actually happening on ground uh, you know all the lakshmis are still suffering the durgas are still getting all this there are so many things are still happening so i made sure that uh you know whatever i'm doing i have to believe in that and that's how neelam is a huge thing because she taught me so many things and um and that's how i feel you know ki uh, i want to keep working like that that i have to believe in what i'm doing money uh, is a, another space but being an artist is my huge responsibility that what i'm working on am i doing justice to uh what i'm doing am i being part of this society am i being responsible enough as an artist because we forget you know i don't know if i'm being articulated or not no, no. because uh yeah i'm Absolutely. very bad at it and i'm just very good with looks <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think you know like kaam karo ghar ja this is something which is a very uh, uh difficult space for me it's not Absolutely. Not. Yeah. So, was that the question you asked, and I answered correctly? <laughs> Now you know, Ab, I am away from all. The kitne sare sawal ke jawab dene padte hain. You know, I know the both of you haven't met the Krishna Murtis as part of the prep for obvious reasons. You don't want them to relive that trauma. But you did get to meet them for a panel discussion, which I haven't watched yet because it isn't out yet. But I'm curious to know. uh what it that was like did you feel like you caught the sur like you just said no you were totally enamored by neelam no <laughs> yeah. love i was. i love her love yeah. her. she said ke na tum mujhse mili bhi nahi aur tumne mujhe kaise dhoond liya <laughs> and uh, wow yeah i think her validation there krish shekhar and neelam's validation was very important for us very i was in awe of her the way she is you know the way she is handled you know person jo 25 saal se roz utke you know was going and fighting uh, it's amount of tremendous energy she have it's very difficult otherwise you know we'll give up like one day two day maybe one year two years five years okay 15 years <laughs> but 25 years and t- till today she is fighting they both are like you know even our our discussion is all about that and she, they were sharing so many things with us and we just like you know how how you know amazing and but how difficult it is for a person to you know be so strong and that okay now this will happen that will happen and then now we have to do this and we have to do that so uh, i think the focus is like you know so good and so much to learn from them both of them yeah yeah you've also said that this is one of your hardest roles and for obvious reasons um, uh, does a role like this take longer to shake off or do you let it stay i've 
I used to, whenever I did a more dramatic feature, and also in the early days of my career, because you were always constantly fighting to get the kind of movies you wanted to make, whether it's Dave, Dear, Oilak, Iqtalis, Manorma, all of them had been a task. Cheer for that filmography, guys. That's how I was thinking. I was trying to say that, um, <laughs> now I forgot my point. <laughs> Uh, so you're, you're, you're struggling to get the kind of work that you wanted to I was trying to get, to yeah, to really carve this niche. And so maybe that had an impact on my psyche because if I would do something dramatic, I would, as I say, take your work home. Mm -hmm. And apparently actors do that. And I had, I remember running away for a year to New York. I just left because, especially after Dave D and Oilaki. Thank you. And, and, my, and I didn't know that I had been affected. And my friend told me, you're actually affected by this. And I was, I'm not one of those actors, no ways, that's not me. And then I realized, oh yeah, actually it had had an impact on me. So I decided I'm not going to ever let my, take my work home and, and influence me. So this one comes along and challenged that. Mm -hmm. Because while the tragedy actually made it really easy to get into character, because nothing I've gone through in life can compare to this. So anything emotional, dramatic didn't take any work. Um, but to get out of it, you're also playing this space, this incident, and you know it's happened to someone. So it's not, if it was fiction, done and dusted, I'm home now. But it's not. So that lingered for And a they're while. still living through it. They still are. They're very yeah. strong. They're extremely cool and inspiring. And they have a laugh. You know, they've moved on with life in some aspect. Mm -hmm. But this fight for justice defines who they are. Uh, Prashant, I can see the perks of directing these mm. wonderful talents, but what really are the, ch like, is there a flip side? What's the pressure of directing two actors that come wearing the good actor tag <laughs> so big, loud and bold? Yeah, well, I, I, I think it's, it's always difficult to, you know, it's, it's the most exciting part of our job and also the most intimidating. Um, uh, you know, I don't know how other directors do it, but I still don't understand how they do it. You know, I don't understand what happens before and what happens after and what they tap into. And my feeling is that no two actors are the same. Mm -hmm. And where they go to kind of get that uh, thing is, is still a mystery to me. So, very, you know, I think really for me, more and more it's about understanding what a particular actor needs because they're all different and trying to create that, that environment, you know, and supporting that and then just being there to sort of shape it and make sure it fits into everything. But you, you, they work in such different ways also, their you know, processes. their processes are very different. So, um, so, you know, that's, you know, Rajshri is a, a volcano, you know, in terms of like, she, she has a huge, like emotional kind of, she can tap very deep and, and, um, and it's, it's really incredible to, to, to watch. And um, pretty shallow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you know, and, and Abhay's obviously, you know, you know, he's had many, many years to understand his, you know, his, his way of working and he's, you know, he's precise and, and comes in with, it's, it's very different, the rhythms are, and that is, it's the case with all actors, so, uh, so yeah, actors are full of challenges, they're <laughs> definitely the, the hardest and most exciting part. Can we talk it. about a scene that was particularly difficult to crack for whatever reason, because I think it'll be fun for the audience to sort of look out for it when they... Binge the show on Netflix. Well, we had a couple. <laughs> we had quite a few of those. We we really had quite a few of those. You know, I mean, the, on the on the on the harder emotional side, the, the hospital sequences were really, really very dif difficult. And we were also shooting it during COVID, so just oh. being in a hospital at that time, you know, yeah. was was in itself, you know, the, everyone was very tense. But what they had to go through there, and you know, the fight, looking, you know, looking for the kids was, I think, emotionally draining. I'm trying to think what else. Um, you know, with Abhay, we had, you know, there's a sequence where he goes out drinking. Mm -hmm. um, and all that was completely improvised. And, you know, in my first cut, it was like 10 minutes long because it was so, <laughs> I was so funny. And they, you know, and, I, you know, and of course, then, you know, um, you, know, I, you know, it couldn't be 10 minutes long, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, and, and with Rajshri, you know, I mean, I, I would say the, that speech that you referred to was, was a momentous one as well. That was really, really difficult. Uh, they, I mean, it's full of them. Yeah. Uh, Prashant, when you have a show that is over the past 25 years documented in the media in so many different ways, as a filmmaker, what was something that you were sure you didn't want to go, a way you, a route you didn't want to take with a show like this, something you didn't want to do? Um, 
Well, well, I think you know the, it's important to know that they're still fighting for justice, yeah. you know, and um, and the, over the 25 years, uh, it's a long period of time. So immediately, you know, when Sid Sid uh, gave me the the book, like it was clear this that a, cl uh, a classic structure that you would expect with this kind of story wasn't going to work. But that was also what was interesting about it because I felt it was a a more honest depiction of what it what a real hero is like and what mm -hmm. it takes to make change is that you almost disassociate the result with the fighting. You still get up every day and go uh, because that's what you believe in doing. And they're very good, they're very good examples of that. They, they just get up every day and they go and they fight and they fight and they fight. And that's what it takes, that kind of resilience and, and strength. So we knew immediately this wasn't going to be like hurtling towards an end result. You know? uh, and I think that was also nice because in, you know, in the OTT space, yeah. everything is about you know, so it was nice to know that the structure of it had to be something that uh, honors the amount of time that they, they put in. And it was also nice that the ending was, you know, I often think of the end of Raging Bull, you know, where the, where the you know, he's staring, mm -hmm. you know, at the screen. And that image kind of kept coming back because the victory is in not accepting defeat, in a sense. Um, so those two things made it really interesting. We also, you know, we didn't want to just blindly kind of tell the story that, you know, the Krishnamurtis might have told in their book. We wanted to look at it from multiple perspectives. Uh, we wanted to answer for ourselves also why, why we think the Ansals are guilty, what went wrong, and so on. So I think this structure sort of allowed us to look at it from multiple perspectives. Um, and then, you know, it was a chance to do something like quite, I think, different in the, in the space. space. Um, and, you know, thankfully, Netflix didn't fire me. <laughs> and uh, or fire us and, and allowed us to go out and do that. Um, I see that contract being renewed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you yeah. talked about resilience and Trial by Fire really is such an incredible story of resilience. And God knows that you can learn resilience from actors because I don't know what it takes really to wake mm. up every single day, go out there, audition, face perhaps multiple rejections and still go out there and fight the good fight. And since we're talking to a room of so many acting students, I really do have to ask you guys, how does one not give up? I don't think, I mean, while it's a difficult profession and there's many things that are uniquely difficult as an actor, mm -hmm. it's not the one of that course, it causes I'm most resilience. I'm not comparing at all, but resilience is, I'm speaking of resilience at large. Resilience. Um, that's, I, like, I don't know about the resilience part. Uh, it's definitely a very insecure profession. You don't have the same security that other jobs will give you. It's not a nine to five. Salary doesn't hit your account at the end of yeah. the but when it Yeah, it's, it's a, it, maybe because you're, you're probably more vulnerable than most professions. Perhaps that's why you need resilience, I guess. Because I see daily wage workers, you know, having the resilience to do everything, do every day what they do. And, and at least in the acting profession, if you have the benefit, the luxury, the privilege to be able to pursue it, and you're talented, the, the resilience is just in improving yourself and, you know what I mean, and having um, a sense of script. Sure. But um, to you want to inspire people to act, right? I would or say. Or I want to talk about perhaps when you don't have the luxury and the privilege and the. <laughs> There's both, like there is that, like it doesn't matter if you have the, I mean there's luxury and privilege to pursue it. Success isn't something that's defined by talent sure. alone. Sure. And also there's pros and cons in many, you could say in, 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 in many situations, okay. Um, I would say first of all be honest with yourself. If you want to be an actor, be honest. Come back it's, to it's the not it's not no to be honest with yourself it's not it's not something that you can necessarily learn I know a lot of people learn acting and you could possibly learn to basically act and there is a certain level of performance that is there and we live in a world which is structured with PR and marketing and endorsements so even if you're a mediocre actor you can be backed up with a lot of Marketing, you can, and that's what I mean by also privilege and luxuries. Um, and you can choose to not do that even if you have it. Um, and uh, that kind of helps your career working with the right people. That's why you find a lot of insecurity in the industry. It's like, who's my co actor? 
Black Adam when I did Dave D. Mah he came and said, so thank you for working with me because no other actor would work with a newcomer like me. And I was like, I don't work that way. Like I know every actor wants to know who I'm working with. You kind of rest your success on your co-stars, on your director, on your producer. And you're very vulnerable when you don't do that. And that's what I mean by privilege. So if you want to, and there's nothing wrong in trying to make it easy for yourself. So, because I fought that battle. I said, I, I want to work with new people. And it was very hard to get those films out, but they, they had their new ideas. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you have the privilege to be launched by someone, to be backed by someone big, as long as you're confident of the product, of the content, I'd say go do it. Don't say I want to reinvent the wheel or I want to work on something indie and not this and that. Just keep working and improving your craft. Because you may not have super talent, but if you can just deliver with the right people behind you, you can go far. At the same time, you may have all the talent in the world, but you don't have the right people backing you. And no one's seeing your work. You'll fizzle out. Like I did this film called Manorma. There was no marketing. There was no distribution. Years later, say, wow, what a film. When did it come out? It's a cult hit. Because <laughs> nobody knew. Because they didn't have the confidence that this film would do well. But I still didn't back up. And then the industry would tell me, see, we told you this stuff doesn't work. I was like, no. Nobody knew it was played. So there's many, many things that go with being an actor. Um, try and see where you can get your advantages. The simplest solution is always the best solution. Don't look for something intense that, oh, I must go deep down to the root. No. Um, if you have an incident in your life which is different from the incident you're portraying, but it can rise the emotion in you, then use it. Use from your real life and bring yourself to that place. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, so to, wheel, so to speak. And also always respond to your co-actor because they might do something different. Be available to them. Be aware of what they are doing so that you can respond to them. And that's also in real life. Acting is also a lot about getting to know yourself, getting to know people, why people do what they do, um, uh, what defines them, how they get defined, how you judge, how you're being judged, from where you come from, from who you are, where you're going. And it's a great... That's what I love about the profession. It's, it's a great insight into the human condition. And it made me question my upbringing. It made me question my religion. It made me question my community. It made me question my identity. In that questioning, you'll find characters. If you never question, you'll always have your colored view of what this person is. Or, you know what I mean? Like, from what you've been taught. And you may think you haven't colored it, but you really have. So unless you step away and not let other people define you, you know, rich poor doesn't matter in acting. Because once you, that camera comes on, it doesn't matter who's put you there. You know, so, and it's, it's definitely an insecure profession. You don't have a secure job tomorrow. And that's why there's a lot of people who take advantage of you as well. It's very competitive. I'm not trying to put you off. I'm not. <laughs> have awareness of these things. A bit late in the day. <laughs> Kidding. No, yeah, I'm not trying to put Kidding. you off. And that's not what I mean. It's a beautiful profession. If you're lucky to get success in it, there's nothing like it in the world. Um, and you will constantly reinvent yourself if you choose to go out there and make yourself vulnerable. Um, if you choose not to do that, you can, at you can be a star. And you don't have to reinvent yourself, you know. <laughs> it's why I love interviewing Abed <laughs> You know, but Rajeshree, you said that not too many people come to you with work. And as a female actor, getting good work can get difficult. I want to know what really is your challenge because God knows and we know that good acting isn't a challenge for you. <laughs> good acting isn't a challenge. Of course not. So what, what really is the challenge for you when it comes to uh, uh, not giving up? And not giving up. Uh, I love this profession. I think, uh, uh, you know, like, our parents don't say that, okay, like, abhi ke, today's generation, maybe they have that kind of a thing, you know, ki, oh, okay, go become a YouTuber, go become an actor. It's very difficult. So I chose this profession because I felt that uh, even after do, working in different, different areas, I realized that my joy was theater, my joy was performing. So I chose this profession. But of course, you when you begin, you don't know because you are unaware of so many things and you're learning. Okay, okay, chalo. You break your heart. Okay, okay. 
So in all of that, I've understood that you have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself mentally, you have to take care of yourself physically, psychologically, everything. And you have to take care of your friend also, the other people also. You all are sitting here. It's very important that, you know, ki you have to understand what's going on with the other uh, co-actor of your friend who is part of the, uh, you know, the uh, acting. You have to understand that. You have to be a support system for each other. And that's very important in this because we, at the end of the day, we are all alone. So uh, let, you know, let that, uh, don't destroy you. So help yourself. Listen to yourself. Um, work is, of course, we all want to do good work. It is not easy to get work because you have to keep going for the auditions. I have, I don't remember how many auditions I must have done. So many auditions, so many rejections. And the rejection used to be like, you know, okay, ye nahi hai, achha, ye nahi hai, wo nahi. Koi, koi to batata bhi nahi tha. So, matlab, yeah, it is very difficult. So you have to keep on thinking. And in all of that, you have to believe that, okay, this is the kind of a work I want to do. I want to find that space. But as I I have done bad work also. I've done something, you know, ek scene yaha kar liya, ek scene vaha kar liya. I did it because I needed to do something. And I thought, okay, chalo, ek kari to lete, kya hoga? So I've done everything. But then when I, uh, uh, when I fortunately got angry Indian goddesses, where again, you know, it was an audition process and everything, and I don't know what Pan Nalin and um, uh, Dilip Shankar, the uh, casting director, saw in me. They said, okay, chalo. And then, uh, then the process of that was the turning point for me. But before that, I did so many things. But that didn't stop my, the, uh, my struggle. After that also, uh, you know, there was tons of things, tons of rejections was happening because you were still not there. Then again, uh, you have to go back to the audition line and give audition. So I was all prepared. I, I, I didn't thought that, you know, okay, I, okay now I'm, everyone is writing about me. So I'm there. You never know. Tomorrow again, I have to go back to the audition process, which is true. You never know what is, what works for whom. Kabhi koji aisa hota hai ki achha re Instagram followers nahi hai, iske kaise cast kare se. You know, kabhi kabhi aise hota hai. Yeah. Matlab nahi, it is reality. And... See, that's the reason you have to keep finding people who does the work you believe in. You have to keep on, you know, working on yourself. Working on yourself is like the craft. You have to It's a riyaz which is every day. Actor kabhi chutti pe nahi hota hai. Kabhi bhi nahi. Hame roz, roz observe karna hai. Roz apna khud ka khayal rakhna hai. Kyunki we go through so many vulnerable moments in our life and on set. We are the, well, there was a lot of difficulty. Sometimes you think, hey, you didn't forget the line. You read, like, you read everything, and then you think, why I'm not able to perform? Because that two seconds of that, you get, uh, you know, uh, you, you feel that you cannot do it. And that destroys you. And that happens with, happened with me also. And it destroyed me many a times. But then I realized, you know, okay, it's okay. If it's happening, work on yourself. Find that calmness inside. There, are, there is chaos. You have to be part of that. Find that calmness. And um, breathe. <laughs> it's very important. Like now I'm doing. <laughs> breathe. Yeah, because we all have not slept the whole night. Yeah, because yesterday two night, two nights actually, 12 o'clock the show dropped. And then since then we are just taking calls where people are crying. Then they are sharing things. We are crying with them. They are crying with us, and we are talking to them. So it's a like a lawsuit so, in between all that. Yeah, yeah. and and the lawsuit. So I feel uh, we all are doing is we are trying all to breathe. breathe. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. That was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I just realized that I am nearly out of time, but we do I have know, audience welcome. questions that we have to leave time for. Uh, so I'll just basically ask you guys now, trial by fire. There's going to be trial by the audiences. So what is it that you're hoping that? Each one of these guys and everyone that watches this show on Netflix takes away from it. What do you what what, what do you hope that they take away? Uh, I mean, for me, it's uh, it's that uh, if after such a devastating loss, these two people can stand up and fight for what they believe in, uh, that we can too. Uh, for me, the series is uh, you know it has uh, the tone is obviously it's a challenging show, but I think ultimately I hope it's it's inspiring in the sense that it's a story of two people who just don't refuse to go down and if we can find a little bit of that in us uh, then then I think you know things would be very different 
Um, so I, I, th I think <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. Our, uh, this is the reality of our country. Yeah. The delayed justice is nothing new. Um, corruption is nothing new. There's systemic problems we have. It's endemic. Uh, it took the courage of these two individuals and the families. They got together. Together they were a force. So I think in this day and age, it, it may take a leader to put a group together, but it takes the group to lead. Um, you're vulnerable without each other. Um, that they are, these individuals are actually, while they started by seeking justice for their children or their mothers and fathers who lost their lives, they are now continuing that so that all of us don't suffer the fate that they suffered. So there's a lot of sacrifice that they have made. And it's important to recognize that. And if films serve both a mirror to the culture and they also create culture. So the mirror is the situation we're in. And the creation of the culture is what you choose to do from here. Let's hope they take that. So the yes. reviews have also just come out today. So <laughs> we're, learning. we're learning what people are taking yeah. from it also. What people are getting from it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, we are reading, talking, yeah. we are reading, yeah. talking. We're constantly on <laughs> I stopped reading it. <laughs> I recommend you read the film companion reviews. <laughs> it is a show yeah, that has that'd been that'd be unanimously loved. There's been a few of the film companion yeah. ones, yeah. right? There's okay. no. been a few. Thank uh, so, you. I Thank mean, you we're that. not done. We have the audience questions. There will be a fish bowl that's handed. Thank you, Ruan. Oh. Handed out to me. Some fish names in here. Bowl. Some lucky Start from that audience side. members. Just pick a name. Ladies first. Okay. Ladies. Say you the two. name okay. out loud. And <laughs> guys, we'll pass a mic to you. Um, so, Arya Shah. So I just wanted to start by saying I'm a huge, huge fan of the three of y'all. I've seen all, pretty much all the works of the three of y'all. So uh, my question is for Prashant. Uh, so a lot of the stuff that you have made before, be it America or Trist with Destiny or now even Trial by Fire, a lot of it is, it's extremely rooted in reality. So like, how do you ensure that uh, in the process of making the show or the film that you don't follow an exaggerated approach or you make it caricatured. So what do you do to ensure that that doesn't happen? But I, I think it's really about kind of uh, uh, not being alone in that responsibility and just asking people. You know, you know, sometimes you're on set with people who've been on 100, 200 films. You know, they may be working the lights, but they know when something is working or not. You know, does it feel real to you? Does it not feel? And just by looking at them, you can see, you can get, you, you know, they, so it's, I think it's also just like about including everyone and just being like, is this right? Is this working? Does this feel real? Does this feel like authentic? And the more and more that you, you do that, I think the better and the stronger things get. So. Thank you so much. I'm halfway yeah. through the show and I'm really loving it. Oh, so thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Vignesh. So my question is actually not related to the show. So mm -hmm. the thing is like uh, we've seen like right from the uh, start of cinema, there have been like different moments like the parallel cinema, or the French New Wave. And like for example, uh, for the past few years, uh, from the advent of the ODD space, there have been like a lot of shows that have been coming up. So do you feel like uh, there's a new wave that's been rising for the past few years? Is this for... Yeah, it's for... It's for all of you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there is uh, definitely now more space for exhibition. So you see, in um, a really interesting story, like, growing up in the film industry, you, you, it was not supported by the government. It actually was run by those who were, like, had, were families in the industry. I would remember as a kid growing up, someone mortgaged their house to raise money or lost their home. It, it was really a family business, as our country and culture tends to be, you know. We tend to do the business of our fathers. It was very traditional. Then when the studios came, that was when change happened. Um, and suddenly you get loans from the banks and there was more structure that came in. I was able to bring those films early in my career because when the multiplexes started coming up, for a brief moment, there was a little bit more exhibition space. So those that dominated, you know, the single screen cinemas, 
for a moment the studios that came in now also of course this is a relationship based industry so a lot of the studios had to buy the stars to attract them into their fold but they could also make some offbeat film they call them non commercial which is like it's not commercial nahi hai yaar don't call them non commercial films call them offbeat if you want to and so that that came out of that phase but then the multiplex is obviously a physical entity so there was only so much which was much more difficult for me to repeat a manohar mahadev dev di or anoila ki so to speak um and you know the the powers that be also wanted more exhibition space for each film so it was just harder because there was no more space now with the ott space it's a digital space and they will obviously make the mainstream uh, commercial fare because you know they are subscription based but because they're a digital space they're unlimited they can make the non mainstream so while they'll make a film that might look like a regular formula film well done and 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 everything they can also make a trial by fire which is also well done but a completely different <laughs> approach to everything from the acting to the shooting and all of that stuff so as far as new wave is concerned you know parallel cinema as we call it it comes and goes like when i was doing my stuff early part of the century they said oh this is something new i said no if you look at nfdc when they came up and shabana ji nasiruddin shah and all of those guys came up you go for the back you see bimal roy rishikesh mukherjee so they've always had bouts but they never lasted and so now maybe this time around it might last who knows because like i said this is an um a limitless space and then factors like and it's not in isolation factors like the pandemic made people sit at home yeah. and so now suddenly they were watching a lot more than what they would normally watch post pandemic people are wondering what is wrong with the public why is the taste change like why are films not working it's because now they are that much more exposed i always knew that the generation mine not so much mine somewhat on the edge of but the one coming right after are going to grow up with the internet all of their lives so they're not going to be the same audience that you were be catered into for the past 30 40 years so that forces change because the studios only respond to what's selling if something selling why do you invent because it's selling that's why no change ever happens now when the audience tastes change and they have to reject what they be given then they are forced to look and then when the exhibition space also opens up well then even if the audience doesn't ask for it you can still do it and let's hope they do mm-hmm. that that answers your question mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. i just want to add can please of yeah. course yeah. so i don't understand much of maths uh, over here but uh, i just feel ki uh, at the end of the day we are telling the stories of our society too which is the most important part uh, and uh, if you look at the cinema the way it has started and uh, then the changes which is like you know in uh, uh, 60s or 70s and then 80s so you see what is actually happening in the society is also we are the cinema was also evolving with that and it evolved in a good way also and a bad way also so uh, yeah that's how it is working there are some people they still want to you know like kind of uh, work on the same formula uh, and there are some uh, some people wants to just like you know deconstruct everything and start constructing with things you know and start going back okay let's work on the content again just sit on the scripts again and again and again even with the uh, you know our show like the amount of research these guys have done it uh, uh, so you need to do that uh, and you have to keep on doing that because at the end of the day it's a society uh, expression <coughs> yeah. so you know like guru dat was considered he was going against the grain and his films didn't do well yeah. you know so you'll always you should look at history and see and then when you see actors today who perhaps aren't really up there but i have talent or directors for the same reason you have to see what factors are playing here not just the public but even the infrastructure because filmmaking it's it's a group it's a team effort whatever we do we do with a team you know while there is a captain of the ship but there's also the actors there's also the co-actors there's also the supporting leads there's the cameraman there's the editor there's the musician yeah another thing about acting in this note even if you stood there and did nothing but the camera's tracking in you and the background scores you know like wah kya subtle acting kiya <laughs> you know so, so you have to remember It's not theater. Theater. I'm trying to perform so I can reach out to you guys at the end, and so I have to be big. Cinema. My face is suddenly like huge, so even a little infliction goes a long way. Yeah. 
And I have to ask, and just squeezing one more question in. I heard you say in Sacharita's interview that you're trying to break the notion of being a hard nut to deal with. Are you really, or is the industry just not welcoming of a non-conformist? Well, there is, a, there is that. Like, okay, let me take it out of context, context of just me and, and me in the industry, and let me take it to all of us and the culture we grew up in. Um, we are a culture that is very traditional, that you could say is conservative. So it's similar in the film industry. There, it follows tradition. It is conservative. So if you are of a certain kind and you have certain beliefs and you and and you're idealistic, that can put you at loggerheads with others. You don't have to be a difficult person to be difficult to deal with. The difficulty can come from your idealism, not necessarily because of your demands. You know, and um, and then you have to be really smart with how you deal with people because if you are an idealist and you wear your heart on your sleeve and you're reactionary, which is what I was, you can easily be taken advantage of and people will use that, will, will manipulate you. And there's a lot of that that happens. And that is only if you are trying to make a statement, if you are trying to hold on to individuality. If you're not, you're just ready to do whatever, that's easy. And by that I mean, at least people won't be able to manipulate you. You're, you're going to be pretty clear in what you want. You'll end up meeting the people who you're giving them what they want. You're not fighting the system. You're just part of it. But if you are, then you should be aware of yourself because you might think you're doing the right thing and you may, historically speaking, be on the right side of history, but your conduct can be easily gaslit. <laughs> oh. Anybody here? Pankhuri Gupta. Hi. You look surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Um, firstly, I'm so glad I could be here. Thank As an actor, God. I learned uh, a thing or two. Secondly, uh, something to this effect has been asked already, I believe, but still uh, the question is to Rajshri, ma'am. Um, uh, your filmography uh, consists of uh, pieces like Angry Indian Goddesses, Sexy Durga, to portraying uh, Neelam ma'am's journey, a long <laughs> journey of resilience. Where do you find the courage to portray these characters and also be Neelam Ma'am, uh, bringing in the 25 years of struggle and trauma and the fight? Um, see, I am learning. Till today, I'm learning. I'm just trying to understand every day that, OK, this works or this doesn't work or whatever. But, uh, when I started uh, my acting career, uh, social work happened in my life too, along with that. And uh, I started working with people. So, I, of course, I was in Nepal after the earthquake. I was working there. I was, uh, um, I used to visit the you know, shelter home, traffic uh, women shelter home, and be part of that journey. Uh, and then I started working for villages from uh, Maratwara. So uh, the more I became part of all these uh, spaces, the more I started uh, uh, getting aware of human emotions, uh, different, different emotions. So I started kind of, a, you know, like having a memory bank somewhere. It is painful. It is painful because you are going through so many things on ground where, you know, you are seeing farmers suffering. We're seeing, you know, how the villagers, women, are still uh, having issues. We don't have water in the place I work. You know, we don't have schools for children. My, there are so many uh, children. You know, they uh, they still go to go uh, as a daily wage work uh, uh, laborer uh, with their parents, like five years, six, seven, seven year old kids. Uh, my, I still see my thirteen year old uh, girl gets married in the village, and when I see all of that there is a lot of happiness also you know you, you see that you know the farm is doing very well you see that uh, you know someone is sending their child to school uh, you know maybe even if the school is so far and still managing to do that that farmer is working so hard in this so both the things i see i see so much life everywhere with all my other uh, my social work and that becomes my courage my strength my uh, you know the whole emotional bank. Um, so that's how I deal with it. 
I'm, uh, you know, psychologically working on myself also because I'm learning more uh, and they are helping me more. Uh, so that's how I, I build myself. But it's not easy. I do, you know, I, uh, the failures are still there. There's a lot of hustle is there. There is a lot of heartbreaks are there. But you get up and you pat yourself, you know. As I said, you have to take care of yourself. It's just that because there'll be things will happen, you know. But that's not the end of the world. We have to fight again then. It's okay. <laughs> I think we have time for two more. Can we go? Please. Two more, two more, yeah. <laughs> so, Anjulika. Hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, I am Anjulika. And my question is to Abhay. But before I ask my question, I would like to say that I watched the series. I would say, I should not say I watched, I binged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, when I started with the first episode, as you said rightly, uh, you need to take a break. And I took a long break when the silence happened between you the telephonic scene which was there, I almost had a meltdown because you never know what the context of this silence call can be for someone. And after that, I went on uh, with my pinch and the question came to my mind that, uh, Abhay, we all know, uh, now let us not get so serious about it. We all know you as Devdi and uh, we always Some remember, lucky. we have, uh, <laughs> And we now are, a shaker. <laughs> now we, we have we have that memory of uh, beautiful character with us, and always it will always be cherished and remembered as it, it was. And uh, I felt the question came to my mind is when uh, you have so, so much behind you as an actor, and uh, as, like stature of that character you played. Now, what was that trigger factor for you to accept a character like this, mm. wherein? Uh, it was such a mature character mm. and as you, on your own admission it was also a very uh, subtle character who only supports who is not very verbal about his emotions and mm. uh, uh, vocab yeah. so and plus two grown up children yeah yeah so mm. yeah. what was that one trigger factor about the character that you accepted it <laughs> good question yeah. thank you sir um okay uh, i as far as children are concerned, I mean, I played a father of a five-year-old, but that was my fifth movie, Manorma, Six Feet Under. So, I mean, that time people are saying, you can play, you just started your career. I used to always laugh at that because I was like, look, as long as I like a role, I don't mind aging myself. And I didn't give too much attention to the idea of my image and I want to be cast like this because I'm at this age and then people will see me like that. Which, it's kind of true. <laughs> you do risk getting typecast. So, but I, for me, that was... Whatever, I'll deal with it when it comes. I like the script. I like this director. I just want to make it. Uh, I actually am older now by 10, 12 years. You don't know, I know I can milk it still. <laughs> just color this black. Um, but, but I was... They all don't get old by now. <laughs> Thank you. They all are evergreen. Thank you. Um, I, I also, at one level, want to embrace my age. So... Um, if I can look younger, then I, like my next role is that of someone in his early 30s. Oh. You know, I feel like when I did Zindagi and I Mele Ki Dubara, my follow-up to that was Shanghai. Yes. So if you see one urban young kid from South Bombay, then you see this Tamilian from South India who does have a Tamil accent because, you know, he's, he's from that background. Um, and so this sort of playing around with variety was always kind of fun. So that was another factor. Um, then this one has an incident that I was aware of. I know about the Upar tragedy. I was about, what, 1920 or something when it happened. And um, I read the script. Now, I've always uh, chosen from reading a script. There might be one or two I did for money. It happens sometimes. <laughs> but uh, the, the heart of it has always been you know, something that will give me some satisfaction, creatively speaking. Rishira Ganguly. Hi, uh, hello. So, my question is for Rajshri, ma'am, but once again, before I start, I mean, thank you so much for 
telling the story of this tragedy because tragedy hardly gets passed down in history. I mean, personal tragedy hardly gets passed down in history. It's all facts by the end of the day. So thank you so much. And um, Rajshri ma'am, you've worked in the BBC production Mech Mafia, which heavily researched about the criminal empires. So I just wanted to know uh, whether you find a difference in the approach to research when it comes to Indian directors and international directors. I had two scenes in Mac Mafia. <laughs> but of course, of course, I did it because it was James Watkins. And uh, James Watkins directed one of the episodes of Black Mirror. So uh, when I met him, uh, he, he had already Googled me. He had already s spoke to the casting director about, okay, how is she, what kind of work she has done, ha what else she has done, and everything, everything. And when I met him, uh, we spent almost, uh, like, you know, two hours just discussing. And he, that time I had finished um, a, a groundwater, uh, groundwater, reviving a river work at that time. And... Uh, He's That's so cool. Can I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, so he found, the, someone sent him the article. Um, and uh, so he, we were discussing about that for two hours. <laughs> that what exactly this is and all. And the scene was completely different. He just wanted to talk to me to understand how me, I am as a person. Uh, in even an emotional way also. What are my, uh, you know, like even with Prashant also, the same method was there that he asked me like, okay, um, how do we work with each other? What What is the process we should talk about, you know? How are, how's that, how's this? So he questioned me about, you know, what else you did apart from acting? You know, it's not just that, okay, um, uh, like th that's always there, that how, how are you gonna ap approach the scene? But just before that, what are the emotional uh, points you have? So, and uh, of course, the discipline on set. It was brilliant. Tons of people, of course, and, and everyone knew what they were doing. Um, the uh, hair, makeup team, everyone had scripts and they knew what, what the script is going to be, when the change has to come and what has to be done. We had, uh, you know, brilliant DOP on set. Uh, and the way he, even he was directing was again similar method, you know, even uh, uh, on our set, it was such a quiet set ki sirf actor ki awaz aari thi vape. So, uh, exactly same way there also that you have to have that kind of environment to make your actors comfortable. Even if there is something is happening, you know, even if the line is not right, or if any, uh, anything is happening with not going right way and whatever, uh, the director will come to you and tell you that, okay, fine, it's okay, it happens, you know. That is something which is missing in our, like, you know, lot of spaces, that they just want to, Aray, idhar, idhar, aray, kya <laughs> are you doing here? Why are you talking about the line? Why are you talking about the line? Okay, look here, yeah. Okay, do a little smile, yeah. So, you know, well, <laughs> he was saying that that happens. So. Actors are vulnerable. You cannot read them, you know, ki, Arik, line, kyun nahi bol ke hai <laughs> And, you know, uh, matlab, so that's the reason we have to have very sensitive people on board. You, even if it's a one scene, even if it's a one pass, even the, uh, you know, um, you're part of that crowd or whatever, you have to talk to them with respect. And that's what uh, James Watkins did, and I think that's exactly uh, Prashant also did. And when you see, when you have that kind of a thing on ground, like uh, with um, the set, it reflects, and that's exactly the power of uh, you know our show. Ki everyone has handled things very sensitively. Everyone is respected on set. Every human being, every uh, crew a member, has been treated properly. When so, he doesn't get what he wants, is he a screamer or a sulker? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> wow, screamer or start sulker? You're like, no, there's no two yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which way does he go? <laughs> this is not a third option. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as soft-spoken as he is, he, I don't know if he's caught on, but he really is. Hi, episode, don't tell you, right? <laughs> Which is very sweet. Yeah. Uh, and um, I remember... 
I used to get very easily distracted. And like I was saying earlier about, you know, I had to really work on things, mm. not take my work home. One of the things was I would always get distracted by a photographer. Okay. It would just throw me off. And movement. And because you're this in the zone. And this, if you distract me, now I'm blowing up because I've been distracted. But then you realize, as Rashi was saying, now we live in uh, more sets where th there is chaos. Mm -hmm. So the only way I could, like marketing was another thing I hated doing. I didn't like marketing myself. I had to say, okay, marketing is a part of my job. The still camera is a part of my job. And the chaos is part of my job. And I didn't tell you this. Um, so I came with that <laughs> to our set. And there was this one moment where I came and I sat. Now, luckily, sync sound is mostly taken over. So you have to, at least while action, there has to be silence. Yeah. You know, if it's a dub film, it's different. But sync sound, in any case, requires discipline. But, you know, we are generally allowed and jovial people so <laughs> so you have a lot of noise on set and I just I had found my center and in fact I started to get a high from being able to get over that the uh, still camera get over this noise and still find my center the fact that I could get over something that really triggered me was giving me enjoyment and I was in the zone and Prash I guess now I know what I'm about. Prashant noticed and it was quite an emotional scene as this show really is and then he, for the first time I heard his voice go, QUIET! <laughs> <laughs> but even then there was a politeness to it. It wasn't like an angry quiet. Please. Yeah. It was a QUIET! QUIET! They, they could quiet. never hear me when I said quiet. <laughs> they would just keep going. And no, then some good things would happen. <laughs> no, but you can, you can make out, you know, okay, how uh, his tone changes. So if he's happy, uh, you'll ha actually have to understand what he's saying because he'll be faster and all and he'll be moving with this. And if he's angry, okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm going a little off topic here. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know there are spaces. He never went quiet with me. <laughs> Only you. No, 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 no. But I'll tell you what, he was okay. always quiet with you. <laughs> that means you understand. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Is there another question Maybe. in there? <laughs> well, honestly, I can keep going, but we're going to yeah. wrap here because we also got to let you guys go and binge watch the ones that haven't. But thank you so much for A, giving us the time. I know it's been hectic My marketing. My for me, I have to run. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> yeah. On that note, thank you guys. You've been a thank terrific you. audience. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>